What? Uh, freaks! You're up, Tice. Talk, this is not recording, it's not set right. Go. In intro to the show. Here, you're gonna start the intro to the show. What's up, freaks? Welcome to... What show are we on? Breaking the Cycle, episode seven. Let's go. You're going to do the intro because one of these cameras Breaking is not the rolling. Breaking the Cycle is a live show on how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that... You need to touch screen. Oh. So that you become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of... And the type of man your daughter would one day want to marry. That's it. Uh, you know, Ken. These are the types of conversations you should be having with your kids so they can learn to think for themselves and are not afraid to be themselves when so when they eventually and they will be are confronted confronted with these life situations they are not in shock and will have an idea on how to approach it no excuses and i did it all over again because now we're actually on the real recording so you're on the instagrams here and the facebook's here but i like the way you did that but now you're going to do it all over again in three two one Look for the real camera here that was your practice round so you're going to start over again you ready you can scroll with that fucking mouse too okay it doesn't work if you make it work, it'll work. Go in three, two, one, and go. Welcome to Breaking the Cycle, episode number seven. This week, I, I will be talking about. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Breaking the Cycle is a live show on how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family by. Breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that you become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of daughter you're... I mean, the type of man... You you're... want me to become the type of daughter? <laughs> what kind of show is this? The one where you get to choose whether you're a boy or a girl? You know, I decide I want to... I, I, I associate with being a girl more. So I'm going to become a girl. I'm going to... From now on, I'm going to be called Stephanie. <laughs> and the man... Your daughter would one day want to marry. <laughs> These are the types of situa conversations you should be having with your kids so they can learn to think for themselves and are not afraid to be themselves so when they eventually are, conf are <coughs> confronted with these life situations and are not in shock and will have an idea on how to approach it. No excuses. Jeez. Huh? Huh? What kind of... We're not saying any names those, those here, but... Those reading skills... Someone. Those reading talking. skills need, need some, some upgrading. Dude, they were, you were... <laughs> and all that. Breaking the cycle, episode number... What was it? Seven? Mm -hmm. That's it? Mm -hmm. No. That can't be right. It's only number seven? I only? Had, I thought we had more than that. I thought it was like, like in the double digits already. So anyway, today we are going to talk about our experience more from his perspective. Yes, on Steve says, episode number 108, 107, 107. It's funny, we're on 107. Yes, it, Steve says we're on number 7 today for Breaking Cycle. Sit quick over there, sir. Okay. Here. And I talked about it yesterday more from my perspective. What were some of the takeaways I got from this 24-hour hike uh, fundraiser challenge for charity that we did? And today, Tyson's going to share with me, and you'll just happen to be here while we're talking about this, uh, about some of what you got out of it. What was your experiences from it? Here on Breaking the Cycle, we have a... Quit fiddling. Very distracting. Man. Your, your, your feet smell like butt, foot, and corn chips. Holy fuck. So, we have our, our family core values. If you could see on Instagram, you can see it. Facebook you can only see the very bottom right there there's a banner with our family core values we call it the freak code and instagram can see a good amount of it on there and the recording the regular full recording on youtube can see it also the youtubers can see it 
I always like to read to start off with that to kind of see where we're coming from. Our, 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 our free code is all about discipline. We have keywords and then a description of those keywords, how it affects our family, how our family operates to dominate. It is discipline, energy, attack, mind, body, mission, listen, create, win, confidence, protect, and freak, of course, freak shows. And let me tell you, during this challenge, almost every one of those traits or whatever you want to call them, those points of the freak code were needed to be demonstrated and tapped into during this 24-hour hike that we did. There's all kinds of holes in my feet and all kinds of nasty shit going on after this hike. But I want to talk to Tyson and ask him some questions about his experience during this hike as this is breaking the cycle. This is all about the peak freak kids perspective about stuff. So let's let's jump into it. How, what do you want to start off with here today? What do you want to talk about, about first? Guys, want to jump? Oh, God. What's the name of... What's the name of a tree you can hold? What is your problem? Did you like snort too much cocaine before the show or something? What's the name of a tree you can hold? She said it a little more clear, a little more. She said, sit up straight. What's the name of a tree that you can hold? A name of a tree you can hold. A palm tree. I'm sorry. These jokes get worse and worse every week. These jokes, they make me speechless. It takes a lot to shut me the fuck up, but these jokes do just that. Your jokes, you you found the key to shutting me up. So if you want to shut me up, whenever I'm bitching at you about doing something, you left the house a mess, just tell me a joke and you'll get me to shut up at least for a second. Yeah. Shit, so we're kind of talking. So there's a the joke to kickstart the day. We're going to go into talking about this hike, but... You didn't go to school the day after the hike, right? Or what, what, or no, what happened yesterday? You just about, what was going on in school yesterday? Uh, or that was today? Or you were telling me, you were just starting to tell me before we went on air. Here, go ahead, break it down. Okay, so on Monday, it was this like PTA thing for the school. And if you got the most like PTA, I guess, votes or something, everybody would get a donut in your class. and A donut? Yeah, a donut. With like like literally all... a donut? Like a, a donut that you eat? Like yeah, a like... pastry from the bakery. Got it. All yeah, right. it said bakery on it. <laughs> all right, go. And it was covered with all these like artificial sprinkles and everything. And on Tuesday morning, we come back and my teacher says, you guys can go outside if you want and eat your donut. In the middle of like a writing, we're typing on the computer, doing an essay. She says, you guys can go. Just... Oh, me. Go outside and eat your donut. And I was like, nobody actually went outside to eat their donut, and nobody did, but... I don't get... Wait a minute. You were writing. Y yeah, we were writing an essay. And she told you to stop writing an essay to go outside and eat a donut. Yes. yes. After you're done writing? Like, when you're done with no, your assignment? Like, like once you bit. finish, you can go out and eat your donut? <laughs> why on Tuesday go eat your donut? Why, didn't you don't, why wouldn't you tell you I'm to eat on Monday? Because we weren't there. Oh, so this is the kids who weren't there on Monday. Yeah. So there were a lot of kids who weren't there on Monday? In my class, there was only like... You don't mind if I drink a beer while we're talking to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Six or seven kids that didn't go to school on Monday. Why did they go to school on Monday? Because of the peaceful protest. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the peaceful protest. Holy shit. Didn't you come back on Tuesday and... Today's Wednesday. Didn't you come back on Tuesday and you actually got, like, written up for something? For doing something you know in, like, a regular, like... Did you get in trouble for something on Tuesday? Yeah. That's odd. How often does that happen to you? Never. Never? So you got, like, a, a, a slip they had a to bring home. A caution slip. A caution slip. Caution. So, yeah. so you got a caution slip on Tuesday, the day after you, you didn't go to school for your peaceful protest. And you happen to get a caution slip for something totally not related to that on Tuesday. Supposedly not related to that, right? What do you think about that? Do you think it was related? Somehow? I mean, the thing you did wasn't related, right? It was just... 50-50. I think 100 motherfucking 100 to 0 is what I think. That's what, what I think. Not 50-50, I think 100-0. Oh, you said 100 to mother flipping 0 to mother flipping 0. I don't know, so... Yeah. It only has one zero. 
Did you understand what I was talking about? Okay. <laughs> I need to slap the shit out of you live on TV. All right, so you didn't go to school because, first of all, we got messages. I thought the message was from your school, so I said, oh, you don't have school on Monday. There's no school because the school's saying don't go because there's something about kids, sick kids or vaccines or something. I don't even know. I thought, you were, I thought it was for your own safety. I thought they were good for your safety. They were telling you to stay home on Monday. That's what I thought. So we didn't send you to school on Monday, and you go on a Tuesday, and you cap them together. Your first caution slip of your career in, in California schools. That is amazing how that works out that way. How amazing. How motherfucking amazing that is. And then you come back Tuesday, and then you're going to get a donut in the middle of your schoolwork to make up for the thing that happened on Monday. So yes. would, when you were offered a donut, what happened? Did you eat the donut? Nobody did. We'll get to the hype. We'll get to the for our hype, but we just have some we, other I discussions. I just sat to talk there at my first. desk and just completely ignored it. And then I don't go through the entire day without eating it because I will never. And then I was like get, trying a way to get rid of this donut. So on. Trying what, to get a way to get rid of this donut. <laughs> so on Wednesday, uh, we get there, and my teacher comes up to us and says, now you guys have a two-day-old donut. Why didn't you guys eat it yesterday? And we just, like, just went like this, like, no, I don't know. And then my friend Ryan just happened to not bring his lunch, so I gave that to him. And... We don't say names. Oh, then my... Snitches end up in ditches, sucker. Sorry, 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 sorry. But, all right. Well, he's my friend, so... It's not. Mm-hmm. All right, go. And I gave him the donut, and I, find, and I figured out how to get it. That's the whole story. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? So she asked you about why you need the donut, and say you didn't. It, more, it wasn't more into it than that. About her asking about not eating the donut. Why aren't you eating the donut? Why aren't you on the donut? Yeah, on Tuesday she asked, "Why aren't you guys eating your donut?" And that, like I said, we just went like this, like no. You just shrugged your shoulders. Why didn't you answer her? Are you afraid to give? A, are you afraid to? You're not allowed to really think for yourself. You're probably afraid you're going to get another caution slip, is what it is. So you're, if, you, if you speak your mind or sp- speak for yourself or actually think for yourself and use your freaking brain, you almost are in fear of being punished or getting a caution slip. Fucking caution slip. I can't imagine they had caution slips when I was a kid. I don't even know. What would you do if you got in trouble? You wouldn't get in trouble for stuff like that. For talking to another student. For talking, like, for one time. One time talking, one sentence, like, when you when you weren't supposed to be talking, and you get all of a sudden get a caution slip? No. Teacher would say, be quiet. Like, you're done. Especially if it's, like, the first time, and you weren't, like, not a kid that's always getting caution slips. No, Fucking caution. no. One time. Are you? My, I'm not going to get started. Okay. <laughs> but no, go ahead. No, you're just gonna, my, I'm just going to get pissed my, off here. My, my friend. Just gonna I, I'm everywhere. not saying. I'm not There's going to be computer flying everywhere. There's a mirror right there. That thing will be fucking shattered. All these beautiful pictures on the wall will be flung all over the place. Shit's gonna go crazy in here in a second, but continue. Alrighty. This is getting me a little pissed My off. My friend was asking me a question one day for on the math paper and stuff, and I was like answering him, and I got a little bit too loud while the teacher was talking, and she said, Be quiet! And then you got a caution slip. No, that was like two weeks before, and then now this week. Similar situation? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same situation. Same situation, yeah. And you got a caution slip. Happens to be the day after you had your day that you missed because you thought you were supposed to miss for the safety of the students. You didn't show up on the day that was supposed to be a day in California where I thought kids weren't supposed to go to school for the safety of the school because you're unvaccinated. So I thought the whole point was you, we were keeping the vaccinated kids safe from the unvaccinated. I thought that's what the purpose of Monday was. Because the vaccinated kids were in harm of the unvaccinated kids. Mm-hmm. Makes sense, right? Does? No, it does. Then why did you say it makes sense? It makes absolutely no motherfucking sense. Because I was just in a loophole. Okay, you're, you're, mm-hmm. just go join the committee. No, 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 no. You guys want a joke? Oh, no. Why did the computer get sick? It caught a virus. Mm-hmm. They get they get worse and worse. They get, those jokes give me a headache. Those jokes give me a damn headache. I was literally just about to say it. Like, do these jokes give you a headache? 
Really? Yeah, I was just about to say that. So then, why didn't, well, why didn't you tell the teacher why you didn't want the donut instead of just shrugging your shoulders? Like, are you really afraid to like think for yourself and speak for yourself and speak up in school? Why do you not want a donut? Because it was unhealthy. What, what's wrong? What's unhealthy about it? It gives you diabetes. <laughs> you should have fucking said. What else? What's unhealthy about it? Like literally unhealthy about it? Just the donut overall, the dough, the cream, the sprinkles. Okay, what? You don't know what's in it? Like artificial colors. Have to answer your questions for you. Artificial colors and flavors and who knows what else? And Chemicals. Is it healthy? Is there lots of protein and low no. carb and low fat? Yeah, it's low. It's low fat. No, it's high fat. Okay, high so carbs, why are we high, high sugar? You don't know. I have to like keep asking you and asking you because it's fucking fat as hell. Because it's a bowl of diabetes, that's why I don't want to eat your donut. And plus I'm in the middle of writing something. Take your donut and shove it up your ass. Why? Yeah, shit's about to start flying. Like, this is what goes on in school. This is crazy. Please don't. This is fucking, this is nuts. And I'm not going to get started on the other conversations that the teachers have in school. And the shit they try to brainwash the kids about politics. About other types of peaceful protests. So the pro peaceful protest that you wanted to do was not okay, right? But then didn't, wasn't there discussions about other, but I'm going to get into the, the details of it. Wasn't there discussion about the teacher explaining other peaceful protests that went on like six months ago during like riots and cities burning down and shit? Yeah. But those were okay for her and telling you that it's okay. But the, your peaceful protests, you'll get a fucking caution slip for. It was me. In the 1980s in school, I would have politely asked the teacher if it was like the same situation. You can use that caution slip for your face covering or for your toilet paper. Your choice, but make use of it, better use of it. That would be a much better use of it. Recycle that motherfucking paper and use it as your face covering or your toilet paper or both. In any order you choose. Maybe your toilet paper first and then a face covering after you use it as a toilet paper. That'd be a good one. Wow. No, see, obviously you're not going to say that stuff to your teacher, but you should have said the stuff about the donut. Like, no, I don't want to eat this donut because it's unhealthy. Well, first of all, I'm working on my work right now, and I'm afraid if I stop doing my work, I might get another caution slip. You could have said that. Think about it. Like, you're getting a caution slip. Like, it could be a trap. The person who's giving you a caution slip for speaking, for helping someone out with their math question, you get a caution slip the next day. Oh, stop doing your writing to go eat a donut outside. Like, how, how? So, you could have said that. Said, no, I, I need to finish my writing. I want to focus on it so I get a good grade and I don't get another caution slip for not finishing it on time or not getting good enough scores. And then you're going to send a score home to my parents saying I didn't get a good score on my writing because I was busy outside eating a, a fucking donut. But then also say... Well, I also don't want to eat a donut because I like to eat healthy because I exercise, I train, I work out every day. I don't want a high fat, high carb, diabetes, ball of diabetes that has tons of artificial colors, artificial flavors, and just things that I don't eat, things that I don't put inside of my body because it's not good for me because I like to keep my body strong and healthy and fit so I have a nice strong immune system. You know what immune system is? Yeah. What? It's like how you fight back against... Like diseases and... Who exactly. Knows? Yeah. Illness, injuries, even cuts, bruises. Like your immune system is always battling against... Even when you get this working out, the damage you do to your body working out, your immune system helps you recover. It helps you recover. It helps you fight disease and bacteria and all this other stuff. Doesn't that be good to teach that kind of stuff to help fight the coronas? Doesn't that might be a good way to do it? To live a healthy lifestyle? That might be a good way to combat some of it? Fight it? To go to war with it? Because I heard mommy, like, doing some, like, science development thing. She was just listening to, listening to, louder, listening clear, to something, and everything's, like, futuristic, how they're going to make you live, like, an extra 50 years and all this stuff. And then, he's, and then the guy said, well, if we really want to keep our bodies healthy, you should get the vaccine. My entire family has done it. My wife, my you kids. You know what that's called? That's called Nazi propaganda. That's what it's called. Like, how about preaching some health and fitness and nutrition and proper thinking and proper mindset and positive attitudes and putting in maximum effort into everything you're doing and having to be proud about things you're doing, about thinking for yourself? How about teaching that? That'd be amazing. And not one-sided things telling you about 
different peaceful protests how they're okay and trying to brainwash you on stuff like this on politics and peaceful protests and and face diapers and and vaccines like that's what's going on in, in a school and people say how can you even let your kid go to public school why don't you do homeschooling and it's because we have conversations like this so you can go to school to learn your math your english your science listen i can't teach you that shit I can't teach you that science stuff, and you have fun doing some of that stuff. I can't teach you some of that math. Uh, the, well, you've already learned the math. The only math you're going to need to know the rest of your life. You've already learned enough of it. Really, math you don't need to learn anymore. Did you ever need to learn how to multiply fractions? Or you got to speak louder and clearer. Did you ever need to, like, like in your older life, like right now, did you ever need to, like, know how to multiply fractions or anything? If, if I look back at what I learned in school that I use now to run successful businesses and make actual real money and live a successful, happy, motivated, this mistake, life, I'd say up to, what, you're in fifth grade? Probably up to about the fifth grade. But after that, it was pretty much useless. Up to fifth grade, you're still learning some stuff because you are you do want to learn the fractions and the decimals and stuff because that's money. Think about money. You have points and commas and de- you got to multiply stuff, learn how to do percentages of money and have percentages of incomes and percentages of profits and stuff like that. But after fifth grade... The only thing I learned in school after fifth grade that was useful was like seventh and eighth grade learning some basic Spanish just to deal with the speaking different language and doing business with Spanish people that speak Spanish. That's it. So learn Spanish. Yay! It's good to learn. Imagine you learn another language. That'd be, that'd be cool. Learn another language. You know, that's, that's talent right there. That's a skill. Like, those are skills worth learning. Learning different languages that you're actually going to use and skills you're actually going to use like they should be teaching you about business and money and thinking for yourself and starting careers and being an entrepreneur that's kind of shit that you should be teaching about in school we're all totally off topic here but we're just getting rolling we're just rolling and we're supposed to be talking about but this is kind of stuff that goes on the 24 hour hike these are the kind of conversations that spark up that's why we're kind of going into this these are the things we talk about on the hike because you get so delusional because you're so out of it and you're suffering so much, you start having these deeper conversations. This is why, listen, things like the 24-hour hike are, are reasons why I'm able to send them to still go to public school, even though they try to feed them all this poison and this propaganda bullshit that we don't agree with because he knows better and can think for himself and say, okay, I'm going to disregard that because I don't agree with you. I don't believe in that. I'm just going to maybe keep and keep my mouth shut so I don't rock the boat over here and I'm going to go and, and, and still live my own life my way and think for myself and, and be happy and not let this stuff poison my fucking mind and let you try to tell me how I should think. Don't let people tell you how to think. Not even me. Not even me. You could take stuff from me that you think is useful and you like and, and disregard the other stuff. Do not even let me tell you how to think. You need to learn how to think for yourself. And this, this big ass dome, there is plenty of real estate for thinking in there. <laughs> And guess what? Today at school, uh, at basketball right now is the most popular thing during recess and lunch. So we were playing, and there's like 30 kids there, 35 kids, so it was a long and hard game. And then kids are cheering people on and yelling and screaming. And then the principal comes over, and she calls it the bloody murder yell that because we're cheering and screaming and yelling to cheer other people on. When Not anyone talking shit to anyone. Like, you suck. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. yeah she goes, Nothing like that, right? Bloody murder. They're not yelling, like, bad things to someone. Yeah, like, they're just like, Like, you yeah. suck. I hope you lose. I hope you get hurt. I hope you die. Nothing like that, right? No. Like, cheering your team on. Like, screaming loud with enthusiasm and passion and fucking energy is frowned upon the by the principal. The bro- bloody murder yell frowned upon by the principal. That's that's amazing. This it just gets better and better. How often do you see your principal? Like I know you don't get sent to the principal because you don't get in trouble like that. But how often do you see your principal? Actually, see your principal. At at least twice a day. Sometimes three times. What? Yeah, twice a day during lunch. She's out there. And the principal, like the one in charge of the whole school. Yes. How many grades in your school? Eight. You know when I was in elementary school. I maybe would several, there would probably be weeks, sometimes a month more that I wouldn't see the principal. Like when you saw the principal, it was like seeing almost a celebrity. Maybe they want the principal to be more seen or interactive. I don't know. But if they're just sticking their nose in your like 
I'm telling you to stop cheering. The principal has come out to tell the kids to stop cheering during a game of basketball. Have they watched the game of basketball before? They, have they ever seen a crowd and a, a cheering a team on in basketball? It's called energy. And also, it's called you- motivation. It's called inspiration. It's called thinking for your fucking self, is what it's called. It's called being alive. It's called being a fucking human, not a robot sheep, motherfucker. That's what it's called. Pardon my language. Dollar, dollar, dollar. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and, like, when I, there's this game called Lightning. Like, it's kind of like a race of shooting. You need two basketballs. And she doesn't allow the kids to stand in the court when they're out. Like, so here's the hoop, and then here's the white line. She doesn't allow them to step there, like, because they might get hit by the basketball. But all of a sudden, they're over the white line, totally safe. Totally safe. Like, they don't allow you to catch balls. Like, if a ball is coming and then you catch it without it, like, touching anything, the rim, the net, then you're back in and that person is out. But she doesn't allow you to do that anymore. Principal. Yes. So she's out there for your, in, her, sticking her nose actually in your game. Hopefully they don't watch this. You're going to kick that at school. You shouldn't, and why would you get this? Well, we're not really saying, we're not, we're not really doing anything. Just, just giving truth over facts. That's it. Science so today, over fiction. Truth today over facts. Today during basketball, I said truth over facts, and then... People and, don't even get it. Don't even do it. No matter what it is, we don't say what it is. It's, okay. We don't snitch. We just end up in ditches. We just have our own little inside jokes. Truth over facts, suckers. Yeah. If you know, you know. You know. Yeah. All right, let's, let's talk about this right for our hype for a little bit. And, again, the reason why we... we do things like these suffering extreme challenges that are just brutal, like the 24-hour hike, first of all, is to connect, to bond, to connect as a family. Huge, that's really what yes, one of the main things is. Uh, just let me get this okay, to, okay, at least okay, start on the 24-hour hike. We, we, we're supposed to do a show on the 24-hour hike, and we're almost done with the show, and we didn't even start talking about it yet. It's just we can connect. Like Things like we're talking about now, when we're walking up that hill and our knees are bone on bone just grinding torturous, we start having these conversations, these real life conversations about what do you think about this, Tyson? And sometimes our conversations don't even make sense. Sometimes they're real deep, high level, next level shit that's just sparking our imagination and creativity. Like that's what happens during these times. That's what suffering does to you. That's what suffering together does for you, especially as a family. Let me ask you this. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, will you, when, how many years do you think it's going to take for you to forget the experience of the 24 hour hike? Never. Never. You'll remember that for the rest of your fucking life. Yeah. Think about that. That's some deep shit. That's some powerful shit right there. How many things are you doing, creating experiences for your family, for your kids, that they're going to remember next week? Even next week. Let's start there. Okay, what about next month? What about next year? What about 10 years from now? What about on their deathbed? We'll talk about that 24-hour hike on our deathbed. Mark, guys, want to joke down? Right, yeah. Perfect time for a joke. We're talking about death beds. Go ahead. This is annoying. Keep going. Yeah. Why did the bird get in trouble at school for tweeting on a test? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. All right, back to the 24 hour hike. So, another reason for doing the 24 hour hike so it's creating memorable experiences, it's bonding as a family, then it's also for a higher purpose, for a higher calling. It's usually for a charity. It's also bringing other people together, challenging other people, pushing other people, pressuring other people. So many different lessons. I talked about the lessons yesterday on Steve Says, my own personal lessons. We're not going to get into those. You can go watch that episode, Steve Says, episode 107 on on YouTube. You can go look it up and and see all those lessons that I personally learned during the 24-hour hike. But the bigger thing is we always do it for a challenge, for a charity. And it's showing, teaching the kids some resilience. What was the word you used? You said they really... The whole thing is about pain. perseverance. Did you say perseverance? Is that the word you used? I think. We had yeah. like 10 hours to go and we were ready to stop a long time before that. It was fucking brutal on our knees. We were fucked up. And he said something about, you know what? This is really about perseverance. Like, And then once you do that, you start realizing, looking at your life and looking at your day, like, if I could just grind through this, everything else is so much easier. Like, it makes, it puts in a perspective of the rest of the things in life. Like, you're looking down on life from a, a higher higher perch, a higher perspective, like, if I can keep going on this, why would I need to stop on anything else? Like, if I could do this, other shit's fucking easy. This is like, I'm volunteering to do this. Think about when life gets hard, just to drive forward, keep grinding, even though you wanted to stop a long time ago. 
And and when we were done, I asked you, can you do anything? You do another lap? What'd you first say? What was your first answer? No. no. And then would you say you stopped? You said no, and then you kind of cut your own self off, and then what'd you say? Actually, I can't. Exactly. First you're like, no, I couldn't. Because that's that little inner bit, that little self-doubt, that voice in your head that says, you can't do it, you can't make it, you're hurt, it's time you stop, it's time to quit, you're done, you accomplished your mission, you did 24 hours. And then I said, can you do another 24 hours? And your first reaction was again, no. Nah. And then nah. and then you cut yourself off again and said, actually, I could. With that same high pitch, actually, why not? Like, what's going to stop me? I'll crawl, I'll scrape, I'll scratch. What's going to stop me? Other than death. And then we'll just fucking march with the devil in hell. Till he kicks us out. I thought it was the Grim Reaper. Whatever. Like, what's going to stop us? Like, huge, huge breakthroughs and lessons and these types of conversations. And things like the 24-hour hike. And things like this show. And things like these conversations that we have here on Breaking the Cycle is exactly what we're doing. Is breaking the fucking cycle of negativity. Of no positive male role models. Is why I can send him to the schools and he can deal with this bullshit that we're talking about. And just laugh about it. We can talk about it here and discuss it. That's why he can go there because of things like the 24-hour hike. If that makes sense. Makes sense to me. Because we can then have those breakthroughs there and do our own deeper, higher level learning on shit that matters. Shit that's important. Ways of thinking. Ways of life. Ways of living a, a good life. Ways of thinking for yourself. At any age. Not being told what to think and how to think from, from your teachers. Like, fuck that. Fuck that. So on the hike, shit, I, want, I didn't write it down again. It's on that phone, but I want to cut off the Instagram. Saturday, what was the numbers? We had like 50. And he only did, he only did two less laps than me on this hike. And my, I, my one leg looks like an elephant leg. One looks like my normal chicken leg. And the other one's like this elephant leg. It's all swollen up and fucked up from all kinds of things screwed up. The way I had to hobble because I was wearing flip-flops. But that's besides the point. Watch yesterday's video. You want to hear about that. He only did two laps less than me in 24 hours. So that means... At like 3.3 miles per lap, or even more because we went all the way to the parking lot, which makes it a further lap. You did 11 laps. So that's 33 plus, over 35 miles you did. And I just did over 40 miles. Basically, not much more. 40 something miles. You did over 35 miles in 24 hours. And this is not just walking. This is hiking. The amount of up, the amount of stairs we climbed. Saturday, the, first, the 12 hours from Saturday noon till midnight, we did... 55,000 steps for me. That means a lot more for him. 55,000 steps and the mileage was... How many? We had the same mileage. I forget what it was in the first night. First, like, 12 hours. It was 55,000 steps. 189 stories climbed. Like, st whatever they call it. Uh, flights. 189 flights. Then on Sunday, we're more beaten down, so we're at a much slower pace. We did 42,000 steps for the second 12 hours. And 120 or 139 flights. So this was uphill. This was like 50% uphill. That's more than going up the Empire State Building like two times. More than that. Almost three times. Empire State was like 100, 100 feet. That was 180 something plus 130 something, two, three, over 300. That's like going up, climbing the Empire State Building three times. Uh, no, the Empire State Building is like 1,500 feet tall. No, but stories. Oh! It's, 100, it's like 100 or 120 stories or something like that. This was stories. Flights. Oh. Flights of stairs. Oh, so Not steps, stories. A story is a flight of stairs, like 10 feet. Like 10, 10 that's oh, what we call a story. Okay. We did 189 <laughs> stories and then 130-something stories on the second day. So over 300 stories climbed. This is uphill, off-road, rocks, freaking tough terrain. And this is, this is, this is what, he only did two less than me. That's some crazy shit. But that's 24 hours that we were pretty much, he and I were together almost the entire time. Whether we were with other people or what, we spent a lot of time having these type of deep conversations. Think about that. This is what it was all about. That's why this talk we're having here was really, is part of the 24-hour hike because all this type of conversation is what we were kind of the higher level thinking that we're having while we're going on this hike. It sparks so much in your mind and stimulation and creativity and different levels. And on top of that, to top it all off, the even higher calling was the charity for the fundraiser where we raised over $2,200 for charity in those 24 hours. Save Our Allies. Save Our Allies. What is that charity all about from what you know about it? It's from like saving the dogs and people in Afghanistan after the president called all of you. Just say after they were abandoned there. We don't need to after get into the specifics. We don't want to get politi 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 political, political here. What? Okay. 
whatever. After, but people get offended, and then they'll say, oh, why are you blaming the president? So we don't offend anybody. We would never offend anybody on our shows. After all the people were abandoned there. Do you want to know the awesomest part of what he just said? You know what you just said? What was the order you just named who was abandoned there? The Afghanistan. No, you said dogs first. The most awesome part of that is he said the dogs, the the veterans, the Afghanistan people who helped us, our allies that are actually, you know, the, the, the foreigners that are not Americans that actually helped us. Yeah, we owe them something, right? We owe them their fucking safety and security for risking their lives and their families and their livelihoods to help us out. Fuck yeah, we owe them something. So that's what the fundraiser was for. But it's funny that he said dogs first. Midge wants Tyson and I just to get our... Get all our gear together and head out to Afghanistan and go rescue as many dogs as we can. And then listen, if we come up with the means to do it, we come up with the ways to do it, and the strategy and logistics to do it, we're going. We're going. Yay! We're going. All right, this has been... Want a joke? Oh. Real quick. What? Dollar. What's the smartest yep, insect? What's the smartest insect? What? A spelling bee. Oh my god, I hear you on a delay. I'm watching downstairs. What about the knock knock? You said you told me you had a knock knock joke. Oh yeah, knock knock. We're gonna finish off. This is gonna wrap this up on this knock knock joke. Uh, uh, Alright, what is it start again? Knock knock. What? I'm supposed to say who's there. What is it like it's, you can pretend like someone's knocking at the door? Is that yeah. what this is? Like a knock knock joke like that? Alright, try it again. Knock knock. Motherfucker, get off my porch before I pump your ass full of lead. You got 10 seconds to get your no good keister off my property. One, two, ten. Ba, 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 ba. What's that from? I saw it. Oh my god, if you don't know that's from, this is, you don't, you're not even American. What movie is that from? Who knows the movie that's from? Come on, we've seen that like a hundred fucking times. Are you kidding? A Christmas movie. I don't think we ever watched it. Before. I hear Midge yelling it downstairs. What is it, Midge? She's yelling. They're watching this on the video downstairs. I heard her just yell the answer. The kid is fighting the criminals? Uh, home yeah, Alone. Yeah, Midge is screaming, Home Alone. Holy crap! But there's another one that the guy was in the office. No, but he plays that video of the old movie from the like 1930s, the black and oh, white movie yeah. on the VCR when the two bad guys are at the thing. The pizza guy first. Remember the pizza guy's yeah. there? And he plays the thing and the kid runs off and he runs and crashes into the thing. Anyway. Oh, what was the joke? Oh, knock, knock. What? Who's there? Get out of here. I don't want any fucking Girl Scout cookies or I don't want to join Jehovah's Witness. Knock, knock. All right. Who's this? This is a very difficult living situation. Give the kids some credit. Who's there? Woo. <laughs> Woo who? There's no need to get excited. It's just a joke. Woo motherfucking who? Woo, motherfucking who. On that note, we're going to end. This has been Breaking the Cycle, episode number 107. In case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. Tyson, as I'm going to cut it off, anything you want to tell the fine people. No! Excuses! Very, very, very normal, kid. I can't imagine where he gets it from. You are freaking awesome. No excuses. No excuses. Instagrams. I didn't get to see the message because you were very far away. Far away. Boys. What? Yes. Who? Where is that? Someone talking oh. about uh, PKR Solich. So confused here. Gets a warning for talking yesterday, but not two weeks ago. And then gets a donut. Yes. Because it was after kids stayed home from school on a peaceful protest here in California. So it was actually a punishment, I'm guessing, for that. As I try to read this. Breaking the cycle is a live Freaks, what's up, freaks? Just trying to catch up on the message because you can't see messages on Instagram. I gotta go away from free because you can't hear that. You, you can't look at messages after. So I'm just trying to go through these real quick. Yes, very confusing what they do in those Damn schools and the bullshit they try to brainwash these kids with. See a couple people who were on the hike with us that were watching. 
Yes, we have all the kids in everything, absolutely everything. The kids are in. Marsh, what's up? Michael Marsh is there. Home Alone. See, he even knew the answer. How did you not answer Home Alone? You've seen, we've watched that so many freaking times. It's like such a huge part of the movie. Oh, man, what a disappointment. Yes, Home Alone. Michael Marsh, a project graduate. What's up, freak show? All right, we're going to get signed off. That was the entire episode. I'll post this up on the page. So if you want to watch it from the beginning, you can if you're just jumping in now. I need to get running. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.